in physics, you start with a number of quantum fields that emerge from a unified field. However, physics has not found out what that unified field is because they have not put together yet quantum physics and general relativity. Gravitational force is not understood as a field, or it is understood as a classical field, but not as a quantum field. Quantum field is made of, you know, is quantum, meaning that the states are quant quantized. In, 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 in uh, gravitational theory, the states are continuous. It's like, just like uh, Newtonian physics. It's not, it's not quantum physics. So, so there is no, I, no complete idea of what a unified field is, but certainly everybody would expect, even physicists expect, that there is a unified field out of which emerge the fundamental quantum fields. But in, in physics, those quantum fields are not conscious, nor do they have free will. So this theory simply shows that those fields must be conscious and must have free will because quantum physics has exactly the properties of a conscious experience of the fields. <laughs> and free will of the fields. And so you can explain it. And now, I mean, why are you going to argue? I mean, this, it's obvious. Because, and besides, nobody can explain how you can get consciousness for something that is not conscious. And even worse, how can you get free will from something that isn't that has not free will? But our experience is that we have some free will, and certainly that we are conscious. So where does that thing come from? Or oh, it must be an epiphenomenon. That's the, the, in other words, the answer to the fun, most fundamental question of life is to say, you are, fo you are foolish to believe that the consciousness is more than just an epiphenomenon. You see? In other words, throw away your humanity, throw away, the, you know, throw away everything that matters to you because we cannot explain it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> is that... That's too convenient, right? That's not science. That's scientism. That's exactly what I call scientism. Science is to go deeper, not to stop by denying what you cannot explain. I may have lost my bearings at some point in the conversation, but you said gravity. You were referring to that potentially yeah. being a satiety unto itself and then a satiety having a free will. Does that imply that there is a free will to a gravitational the prince, like the, I don't want to even say the principle, but like there's a will underlying gravity. I don't think so. In fact, the, mm. the, 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 the rabbit hole goes deeper. In other words, the, our reality goes even beyond the reality, the quantum, the quantum fields with consciousness and free will. That's it. That's the starting point of, of a, of going deeper. My theory could not attribute consciousness and free will. To the, to, the, to the classical field of gravitation described by the general relativity, okay, is inconsistent because reality, deeper reality, is quantum. So, so you know, but, it, but it, in, in a sense, it is in agreement with the most physicists that believe that, you know, we need to find quantum gravity. We need, we need to understand what quantum gravity is and nobody has a theory yet. So, so physicists are, are seeking a quantum gravitational field, but that quantum gravitational field, I don't think can be found to be this, like the quantum fields. It's, 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 in other words, it is the gravitational force is the one and the space-time and gravitational force connected together, which is the theory of, of, uh, of, 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 of Einstein, that theory is incoherent. In reality, is is in, is is like uh, Newtonian uh, space and time, matter and energy are to uh, you know to the current to Einstein theory. You know, it, it is a is still a simplification of something deeper. In other words, the reality that produces gravitation, the interaction, you know, the, the relativity, uh, you know, in which space and time are, you know, are, uh, depend on the motion of the observer and all of that, which is the, 
the framework of space, time, matter, and energy at the highest level that Einstein has given, which is works very well for macroscopic type of uh, observation, uh, is actually a, you know, a, a simplification of a deeper reality that can only be found the moment that we understand in, in cognitive terms what space, time, matter, and energy are. Mm, models. You see, we do models. not know what space, time, matter, and energy are. And we know, most, most top physicists know that the definitions of space, time, matter, and energy that we have are inadequate. They, you know, they cannot really explain what's going on. And so, so we have to really go, go beyond. And I think that a, a, a model of reality that starts with one that wants to know itself provides a completely different ways to understand what, what's going on. For example, you know, one hypothesis that I have, the space, space, is simply the memory of the experience of one. It's where the experience of one is memorized. And so, and that's what we, what we think of space, but it's actually a memory. Like a if, hard disk. If, what? Like a hard disk. <laughs> so, <laughs> but th th this is an hypothesis. So this is not... Where the what I told you early is a theory, so it's already you know makes sense and is understanding all kinds of interaction with the, with the other pieces, but uh, this one is you know just to give you just to give you an idea of what I mean when I say when you start cognitively understanding the universe as a giant cognitive system that wants to know itself though not a cognitive system like a giant computer which is what scientism is telling you which is horseshit sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then, then you know, you have a completely different uh, understanding. So, so the universe in this reality, one is conscious, is conscious. You know, is the, you know, is the ultimate consciousness, right? Because it's, it knows everything that we know and more, because it is as in in some way is is able to find the meaning that is even deeper of the meaning that you are able to, 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 to get to understand, the meaning that I'm able to understand, and the meaning of near infinite other entities are able to understand. So he, he integrates within itself it's the, of, the overall meaning of its own existence. And so, so and, but the meaning, the meaning uh, must you know, must be memorized because the in quantum physics we already know that the quantum state is dynamic, keeps on changing, and it's uh, sort of you know you can say that it's, it lasts what you could say is the same state. It lasts a, a very short time, a very short time. So in that short time, you must put in memory the meaning of your experience. One must put in memory the meaning of his experience. Then the experience becomes present all the time because the memory is the, must be a permanent memory. So it, it, there are ways in which I can, you know, understand this, but but it's still, you know, it's still a work in progress. But certainly the memory is foundational. Is foundational in, in any theory of uh, of reality. Hey there, Inspired Evolutionary. If you absolutely love this, well, then here's a full conversation with this guest on the Inspired Evolution podcast. Check it out now.